So again, uh, here we are to continue our discussion of React Native, okay? So um, in the previous video, we talked a little bit about the background of mobile and you know creating apps for mobile. <clears throat> in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started with Expo and React Native, okay? So I'm in the lesson six and I'm in the getting started section. And here's a link to the, to the Expo docs. So you can follow this and what you need to do is you need to install the Expo um, CLI, that's the command line interface. So it's a tool that we'll use in the terminal. You can um, follow the link here and read about the uh, quick start guide here. Um, and, or you can follow the TLDR right here, which is just run NPM install global Expo CLI, okay? So I'm gonna open up my terminal here and I'm gonna zoom in on it and uh, you know, I'll install Expo. Actually, you know, before I do that, let me point something out. Um, sometimes I have trouble if you have the wrong version of Node installed. I'm gonna check Node. So I have Node, for some reason, my computer always defaults to Node version 10. I'm gonna switch it to Node 15, okay? Oops, wait, uh, NVM use 15, right? So I have NVM installed, which lets you manage different versions of Node. So now I'm running Node 15. I think Node 16 is the current version as I made this video. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna check your version of Node. If you have an old version of Node like 10 or earlier, maybe you wanna update your Node, okay? So now let's install the um, Expo CLI. So I'm gonna paste here. I've already done this, so it'll actually just run through this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the expo init command to create a new a new um, React Native project. So this is very similar to that npx create React app command, except this is going to create a native project. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to navigate to a folder where we're working, and then we'll want to create the project. Okay. So let me um, actually find a folder here. Let's see. I'm gonna go to class six. I already created this one here. Maybe I'll um, maybe I'll change the name of this one. I'll call that one the old one, right? And then there we go. So I think we're almost done here installing the files there any moment. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna navigate to my folder here. I'll put in this class six folder and we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say expo init and then follow it with the name of the project that we're gonna create. So the name here will be the name of the folder and the name of the project itself, right? So let me copy this and I'm gonna call my project by breed, right? So you can call it anything you want, but I'll, I'll paste that there. And then this is going to download all the files and create a folder. Now, when you do this, it's gonna ask you what type of project you wanna create, because it's gonna kind of put some template files in there for us. We're gonna choose this first um, one right here, blank, okay? Minimal app, clean as an empty canvas. That's kind of a nice place to start, right? Um, they give us some other options here. You can use the arrow keys to cycle through these, but we're gonna choose this first one, okay? And then that's again, again, this is gonna take a moment here while we install all of the dependencies. And what is going to happen is it's going to create a new folder here called by breed, and it's gonna put all these files in here for us. I'm gonna open this up in my, um, my editor here. Okay, and then we'll wait a moment while that runs. Um, great, so that just ran. So now it gives us a couple commands here to work with, right? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna CD into the by breed folder. So let's do that. Let's CD by breed, and now we're in the by breed folder. And next you can run your project with yarn start, or you can run yarn Android, Yarn iOS or Yarn Web, okay? I'm gonna run Yarn Start and we're gonna see how this works. So the, the um, running React Native projects is a little different from doing the web projects. Essentially, you know, React, you, you run, you know, Yarn Start or 
npm start and it opens your project in the web browser and and you're done right you know that's it but here you know we have a couple different ways to run the app okay you can run it in the browser so it kind of acts like a website at that in that case you can run it on your phone like your personal you know device right your your mobile device you can run it on android you can run it on on ios right so it could be on your iphone could be on your android phone okay you can also run your react native projects in the ios simulator on your computer or the android simulator so in order to do that though you have to have the 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 simulators installed for um android you have to have android studio installed and then there's a couple extra things that you need to install on top of that, um, which are the phones. So you have to install kind of a, a like a the individual simulator for different kinds of phones. And there's lots of different Android devices, right? So you got to pick which ones you want. On iOS, if you install Xcode, it comes with the Xcode or the iOS simulator for Xcode, which has all of the basic um, iPhone devices on it. So it's got the iPhone, you know. 12 and 14 and um, the iPads in different versions, okay? So um, you may need to install that, okay? I have that installed. I'm not gonna do the process of installing those because it takes a while. So, you know, um, you, I have some notes or some links in the lesson so you can follow up with that. Let's test this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run yarn start, okay? And then we'll see what happens here, right? Okay, so there we go. So we're starting up the Metro Bundler. It opens up a website here. I'm still waiting. It's kind of starting. I think it's going to give me a note here when it's done. Oh, no, I guess it is started. Wait a minute. I got to do one more thing. So um, here we are. It gives me a couple links here. So it says run in Android device simulator, run iOS simulator, run web browser, send a link with an email, publish to or publish a project okay and then down here it says connection and it says tunnel lan and local okay and then it shows us this qr code so here's how this works right i'm going to test this in the ios simulator by clicking the ios simulator button you can also do it by pressing the i here in the terminal Okay, and you'll notice in the terminal, they also gave us this big giant QR code. We're, we're going to talk about that in a moment, right? So I'm going to go here and click the iOS simulator, and it says attempting to open the simulator, right? And so it's opening the iOS simulator here. Like I said, I have the iOS simulator and Xcode installed. If you don't have that, you'll have to install it first, okay? And when you have this running, it may also ask you to install Expo into the iOS simulator. So Expo is an app, right? Let me, um, let me do this. I'm going to go, when you're in the iOS simulator, if you go to the, um, to the uh, device menu here, you can choose the home button. And that's just like tapping the home button on your phone, okay? And this essentially works just like the iPhone, right? So you can see here I have the Expo app. So I've already installed this, but it may ask you to install it. Okay, so I'm gonna launch it again. This is my app, okay? So um, now that we're running here, let's uh, take a quick look at our, at our code, right? So what is this thing that we're seeing, right? It says open an app to start working, in, or wait, open app.js to start working on your app, right? So if I go to the code here, this is the code that I, that I created here in the by breed folder. So this folder is what we're looking at. And this was the code that we created with Expo init. If I go to the app.js link or the you know button right there and I zoom in on this, you can see this is um, the React Native code that's displaying this component on the screen. So what we're seeing on the screen is what we see here. Okay. So this looks a lot like React. You know, I'm importing some components, I'm importing React, I'm importing some other components, I'm exporting a function, which is a component, and um, then I'm returning some JSX, right? The difference here is that in React Native, the components that you use are different from the web components. So it doesn't use div 
and paragraph and h1 and you know all the standard web tags right instead we have view and text and status bar right and then there's a whole bunch of other ones you know so for example i could get a button you know button is a component i can get um scroll view here so scroll view is a component they have um what is it a keyboard avoiding view is a component believe it or not right so these all come from react native right so when we're building apps for react native what we're going to do is we're going to use native components from the react native library so view is a native component text is a native component status bar and all those other ones are native components you can also create your own components okay let's do a quick test so um, this is the text component here let's um, change the text here to you know hello world that's our classic right so when i save this you can see that the view here updates to show hello world right so just saving our code here will update in the simulator okay let's uh let's do a little bit more so uh you'll notice that um they've created a style object down here from style sheet dot create and then inside here we have an object and this object has some properties and those properties are also named after styles that you have in um, CSS right and these are actually the JavaScript names for those styles so every style in CSS actually has a JavaScript like property name equivalent okay so we're going to use those names here and the, the property name equivalent is always the camel case name so you know background um, color in CSS becomes background uppercase C for color okay and uh, let's do another one so if they said like font um, size in CSS this would become uh, font wait font size in JavaScript okay wait I still need to spell that right okay there we go font size right becomes font size um, let's try this right so in in react native what we're going to do is we're going to use javascript to style our components so try a couple experiments here right um i've got a view here that's styles.container and it's using the styles that are here and you'll notice they're doing an inline style so this is actually the same as regular react on the web you can have a style with an object here that has your javascript styles in it the only difference is that some of the styles are going to act a little bit differently and not all of the spot styles are supported for all components okay that said we can pretty much do all the same things but we're going to do the styles as inline okay so let's give it a try i'm going to call this the heading so i'm going to make a heading style here so i'll just make an object or a new property with an object attached to it right and then up here i'll add style uh, prop with um, styles dot um, heading as a property okay and then let's set some styles here so let's say font uppercase size is 36. now in um, css you always need to include a unit for a value in react native units are always pixels so you can't use, you can use percent there's a couple extra units but you can't use m's and rems and all the units that are supported in css right so there we go so there's a font size 36 and this is 36 let's make it font size 50 right uh, there font size 50 right let's do color so color doesn't need any adjustment because it, it doesn't have a hyphen in it right so let's do color and with colors we always make it a string so i can use the keyword color red and i get red i can do let's see can we do corn flower blue that's a keyword color in javascript oh corn follower wait flower i misspelled it let's see oh yeah corn flower blue works tomato is the best shade of red so let's do tomato so it seems to be working let's try um font weight right so we could do uh, font weight of 
bold. So if a value in a style is a number, then we just type the number and we don't worry about the unit. If the um, value is anything but a number, then it's probably a string and we put a string in there, okay? So there we go. So that hopefully gets you started with React Native. You could try adding another text object here just for fun. So I'll say text, I'll say foobar as the second line of text. And you can see I've got foobar here, okay? So uh, notice one other thing here. The parent element, which is style container, is using flex. So everything in React Native is laid out with flex. Okay, so you got to have your Flexbox skills in order, right? So we're going to use Flexbox for everything, okay? Um, yeah, so there we go. So I think that that was a good um, thing to get started there. Why don't you, um, as my challenge to you, why don't you experiment with what we have here? Use the text object and the styles and, um, excuse me, pardon me, um, Use the, use the styles on the text object and apply your styles and see what you can do with this page right here just as an experiment, okay? And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll create a list view and a scroll view and, and work with some data, okay? So thanks for watching.